all right what is good everybody today we have here an orion prince starseed heavily into entrepreneurship he's got drive man i've known this guy for what eight years now Eight years, yeah, since like grade six. Now. It's been a bit, bro, and to watch his journey is so damn cool. So tell us a little bit about you and who you are and what you do, all that type of stuff. All right, um, well, obviously I have um, entrepreneur ambitions. I want to be successful. And I have some passions like going to the gym. I, I really like that. Yeah, but I'm a guy that really thinks about the bigger things in life, the existential stuff, um, the journey and and pa I try to find passions through self-discovery and I just like evolving myself to the fullest extent, the fullest I can. You know what I love about you is since I met you, you always had like this energy of leadership. Now, when I first met Obri, I was actually doing co-op in his class and something about him, I just knew he was powerful. There was a few kids I knew that were powerful just like you. And I was like, all right, these people, I'm going to watch them grow. I'm going to be part of their journey. And as time went by and as I was growing too, it was weird. We were like low-key drawn to each other to know that we could help each other out, yep. especially spiritually. So like when was the moment you noticed you were like some sort of leader or you had uh, a bigger purpose? Honestly, everyone tells me, like not everyone, but a lot of people tell me I'm leader-like. When I look at people, I, I just feel the need to take them in and bring them, bring them in, help them out. I don't know. It, yeah, it just fulfills something in my life. It feels like you almost you were born to do this. Yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, it's weird. A lot of people say that, but I, I, I don't see it. Maybe other people see it, but from my perspective, I feel like the leader that I, I portray is has built up from all the self-discovery and personal growth that I've uh, went through to just master myself, not master, but build myself mentally and physically. I think uh, that's why people label me as a leader. And I don't know. People just like rally behind you for wisdom and knowledge, especially the way they call you like leader. And they're just like, they know to go to you uh, intuitively. Like they don't even know yeah. what's going on. They just know they could go to you for stuff. And it's the same thing with your brother. He always texts me. He's like, how come everybody keeps just coming to me for help? It's almost like they're sent to me or something. That's when I was saying GFL stuff going on. Yeah. Tell me what was something or like a time where you really helped somebody with something and it kind of sparked in your thought like, damn, I'm good at this. Honestly, shout out to Max Polap. Um, Max, <laughs> <laughs> um, Max Polap, I think... Uh, I mean, I grew up with a kid and me and Calvin have evolved. My friend Calvin have evolved mentally too with each other. And Max has uh, one on the other side and I, I slowly see him getting better and I'm bringing him out um, to my house sometimes and we'll have some deep conversational uh, talks and we'll just, we'll help him out. And I, and I see it in his eyes. I do think uh, he, he is a little bit every time, he's a little bit better every time we talk. So I, I do think that me and Calvin and some other people, we're going to turn him around and put him on that right path and help him out. So tell us a little bit about your gifts or something that you would okay. see as um, one of your abilities given to you that is able to help humanity. It could even be something that you see as um, negative or you saw it as negative at first where you're realizing that there's some sort of power or gift behind it. I would say um, on a deeper level, love. I have, like I said, I, I feel like this love for everybody and this need to help them out, no matter if they're negative or positive. I feel like I should just be helping everyone. And I feel like that's why I was put on this planet was to help people grow and better themselves because I know what it's like to be human and and live this thing we call life on earth. And and. I just feel the need to help people grow and like get through this journey of life. So like what happened, what was a moment and like you could even say relatively what age that it kind of clicked. You were like, bro, we can't do this shit like this no more. Or I, I want to take on a different 
path. It's almost like a click of awakening, especially spiritual awakening. Yeah. I think uh, back in grade 10 when I was like um, smoking a lot of weed, I was going like brain dead. Um, I think social media and like people like you were played a crucial role in the person who I am today. Um, it really influenced me to find the better person within myself and advance mentally and physically <clears throat> just to become better. I think those were crucial to who I am today. Social media really helped me out because of the TikToks I would see on entrepreneurship and um, wanting to grow. Something about growth just just clicked in me and I started to build love with this or, or strong connection with growth. Because What was the hardest part of that? Because everybody wants that. <clears throat> But they don't realize like the work you have to put in. I, I remember both of us talking and you're like, oh, shit, this is hard. And I was saying the same thing. I'm like, this shit is hard, man. But like there's this drive. Yeah. It's almost like we get this a lot as star seeds. It's like we want we know that we have to grow for the people like we're the people's strength. I know. Yeah. The personal growth journey is something in the beginning that's hard. But since we are um, humans, as humans, we habituate to things really easy. So once we start something and we start building habits um, with consist consistency and dedication, it'll start to become easy and it'll become harder to break that consist consistency and dedication. So the growth, the beginning of the growth journey is what was really hard. But as you go through it, obviously you'll have your ups and downs, but you'll find ways and you'll build perspectives on how to change your the outlook on the situation that you're in and just build a higher vibrational perspective on everything. You definitely got to have a drive, something to yeah. make you say, I want to do this. Like, especially when you're tired at the end of the day and it's like, you know, you could take yourself to the gym, but you're like, uh, I don't know. I kind of just want to lay here. But then I notice I get this. It's like the drive kicks in again. You, you go back to that remembrance of like why you do this. Mm -hmm. And then you feel this fire in your yeah, chest, like let's you. go. So what would you say is your drive or what reminds you, what, what kind of information goes into your head to where you're like, all right, like I'm going to do this. And it's like, nothing can stop you. If I'm being honest, I'm not very conscious of what drives me, but I think a lot of um, the things throughout my childhood have subconsciously um, affected me and made me turn into this ruthless, um, driven person. I can see that. Yeah. But I, as of right now, I'm not very aware of, uh, what causes this drive, but I've actually <laughs> cultivated this fuck you mentality where, um, you're just looking at life and you're like, even like emotions, they, they affect you a lot and you're kind of just like, all right, so move on. You kind of like, you're going to be a bitch today. Some like TikTok <laughs> mentality. <laughs> But yeah, it's more of a fuck you mentality where you just get through and get shit done because it's going to get hard. But as you walk through the, um, the hard path more, the hard path starts to become easier. So what are you mostly focused on with entrepreneurship? Is there a certain area in that spectrum that you're honed in on right now? Yeah, so um, entrepreneurship, I like marketing. Um, as of right now, my plan is to find a way to make money and... Uh, a good amount of money that I can use as a foundation um, to start up my true passion. And that's where I find a passion through self-discovery. And I integrate that with a way to make money. And I can live a fulfilling life where I can make money and do what I love. Mm -hmm. And I think once a person actually finds a way to do that, it'll be very fulfilling. So you definitely say you have to have a passion, man. Like you can't, yeah. it, it's almost like you're selling your soul if there's no passion yeah. behind it. I definitely feel you. It's like a, it's like a billionaire, right? So you got to have, you start off with a millionaire mentality where you just find a way to make money. That's going to be shit. But as long as you get that money in, you have a stable income financially, <laughs> then I think that's when you can start to think of the bigger things and how I can find this passion to live a fulfilling life. What is a goal you have for yourself or some goals that you've set for yourself? So as of right now, I want to build myself up mentally and physically. So when I come across things such as adversity, I can just kind of like say, fuck you and, and run through them. And I'll build this resilient perspective on everything. And I'll just execute my goals and 
whatever I want to do in life. I mean, I'm still young, so that, that's a big question, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, doing that will just help me execute whatever goal um, with a- ambition, like drive and just go right through it so I can uh, do whatever I, the bigger thing in life. I can fulfill that. It makes me think about being a star seed because you were asking like how I don't know what it is, this drive. I just want to help people, but I don't know what this drive is. It's like it's like scarred in your DNA of like yeah. this is who I am. And it's like so let me ask you, were you always almost like straight out the womb? It was almost like a you know you're gonna be doing something big or that you're here to for a bigger purpose. You know what? It's kinda of been like that. Yeah. I definitely have felt that I've been here for the bigger things in life um ever since i was like how old you, like 14 15 mm-hmm. i feel i felt like i was put on this planet to help people and help them evolve and get through things i don't know it just it fulfills something in me and makes me happy seeing other people succeed and do better in life because maybe there's like a relation where i can like hey i'm doing that too are you doing that like I'm proud of you because I know what it feels like to go through that grind and and deal with that those sh- shitty situations and overcome them. It, it's the best and worst feeling all at the same time. That's the empathy we need, man. It's yeah. like, you know, when they succeed, it's like you're succeeding at the end of the day still. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, what are your goals and uh, ambitions in life? What- hmm, good question. Yeah. My ambition is to use my abilities and gifts for everyone so Hmm. i want to be able to have a show like this for people like you to come on and share their experiences i also want to be able to have a book and all the knowledge i have and connections i have especially with the stars and the different beings i want to be able to share that especially how much information they give me i'm like especially from Uh young i was like what do i do with all of this and it was like a, a hunger for like I need to help people. I remember being in high school too. Teachers would like tell my parents to like, yo, like your kids just helping people all over the place. And then my mom would I'd talk to my mom and she's like, Oh yeah, I heard you this, this, and that. And I was like, in my head, it's not that serious. Yeah. yeah. It's like, man, that's a Tuesday. You know, that's it's a Tuesday. <laughs> that's a, a regular Tuesday. old day. So What's then these Tuesdays. <laughs> Yo, that's my quote. I'm telling you. All you right. guys know about that. Uh, I feel like it's it's always been too... It's like we're of service to the planet. Mm-hmm. We're, if we're not giving, we're not receiving mm. on the bigger end of things. I just want a better world. And I know I see where the earth is shifting. And I know you see it too. And we see where it's mm-hmm. going. And we're starting to realize more about our individual roles. Mm. So tell us now about... <laughs> your spiritual awakening like the moment you awakened and then we'll go into after a little bit about your spiritual journey and some of the lessons you learned or things you experienced especially tell us what the beginning okay. looked like through my self-discovery and uh spiritual journey i would i would meditate a lot and to help me relax and execute the business stuff that i wanted to do um and then through meditation like you started telling me about spirituality like i didn't know too much about it at first and then like I would do meditations and like next thing you know, I'm, I'm like seeing crazy shit. I'm like, what is this? <laughs> and, and it's weird. But like my my gift in terms of spirituality is like I can see things like clairvoyance. I, I can see spirits. So once I actually started seeing that, I'm like, oh, shit, this shit's real. Like, whoa, whoa. I was so excited, bro. I was like, here we go, dog. It's starting. <laughs> so I remember the first time or this was one of the times um the gfl told me that you were going to be in contact with arturian soon Mm. and i was like "Ooh, i mean with how obri's mind works that's some smooth (laughs) shit that's gonna be nice because they're all about like knowledge of the universe yeah so right then i was like oh i see you saw um blue beings how the fuck did you know that (laughs) yeah he was like how the fuck do you know that and i was like they told me this was gonna happen and then you were like yeah what is that and i was like arturians and then i was i was asking i was like tell me about what they were teaching you because i only knew a little bit do you remember um, some of what they've taught you, whether it's directly telepathically or whether it is like they've guided you to watch something and then you gain some sort of wisdom from it? Honestly, the way the universe talks to you is very weird. And I think with your knowledge on the universe, like um, I think you would be easy. It would be easier for you to decipher and explain like 
like energetically like how the universe talks to you it's very it's very confusing but once you understand you're like oh like numbers and like through tv the tv will talk to you like uh deja vu i don't know it works in very unique ways and contacts you in very unique ways i find that very cool Mm -hmm. but i i do remember when i woke up in my room one night and i i shit you not i seen like six blue like i don't even know how to explain it like outlines of people and uh they reacted me they reacted to me waking up and looking at them i was i was like what the fuck i don't know how i woke up either to these things they were probably just somehow they probably woke me up but then i'm like one minute later i'm like what the fuck and i i just went back to bed i didn't think anything of it in the morning <laughs> i woke up i'm like there was fucking six blue beings in my room last night i'm like all right, that's that's crazy. I remember after that happened, so much more shit started happening, especially with lessons from the universe. Like I remember you're talking about taking a mushroom one time, and then it was like it was speaking to you, and um, ego death as well. Mm. Yeah, go into that a little bit. Oh, mushrooms, mushrooms, mushrooms. Anybody that knows me knows I'm pretty passionate about <clears throat> psychedelics and how they can help you advance. When you take mushrooms, they you are deeply interconnected with mostly everything in the world not just the world and nature but the divine and the gal like the galaxy in general like uh, the universe you feel very interconnected they give you access to wisdom and they they allow you to think differently and build uh some type of perspective on things after you have a strong mushroom trip and you you get a perspective out of it it will go away so you actually have to act on the the um, knowledge that you extracted from the trip so you can I actually see. work better mm -hmm. work i've noticed better. that too it's like it can only show you the way but then you gotta do the work actually yeah yeah exactly i mean if you think about it that's it, it make it makes a lot of sense if that's how it works yeah but when i do take mushrooms i've like for me personally i i take them with intent of uh gaining some type of knowledge or helping me advance advance and i i get lots of cool experiences uh like interconnectedness and being at one with the like the universe i don't know it's very complex. i love that when i take them and you feel like you are everything man mm -hmm. and it's like you you may just have this is why i started putting plants in my room because just even the mushrooms only kind of sparks it because then after a while you're like i could like you take it and it's like the universe tells you when to take one and then it just really, it helps you out. But then after that, it's like you've grown a little more and you could do it without it. Exactly. And then next thing you know, it's like when you're on the mushroom, you're talking to the damn plant. So then you, <laughs> you go in your room and you put damn plants all over your room and stuff. Yeah. And then you don't even have to take a mushroom. And then you just understand the plant's existence and how, yeah. how it, you may not understand fully how it works. Even the crystal, you don't understand how it works. You're like, that thing's alive. Yeah. And then you even look in science and they're talking about how yeah. crystals are alive and stuff like that. You're like, oh my God, I knew that from the damn mushroom. Yeah, it may sound crazy to the the typical person that hasn't yet ex had experiences like that, but they're they're very profound and you, you definitely change a lot with your first uh, mushroom trip. It shows you a lot and... You only, it's one of those things you only understand once you act, actually take the mushrooms. Mm -hmm. It's very, it's very uh, fascinating uh, the way it shows you how the universe works and what it truly is. Besides. What's one thing it showed you or taught you from, a, it's almost like a universal principle. What's like a universal principle, lesson or energy that it's taught you and has granted you forever? Connection, that we are all interconnected in one way. And like even every atom, everything is perfectly created. It's almost as if we live in like a simulation or something. Everything is perfect. There's no such thing as um, something being imperfect. That's, that's not true. Mushrooms showed me that everything's perfect. And when you even take mushrooms, you see cool shit like, like the, the plants. Like there's, it's, you can tell they're alive. It's very fascinating. Wow. So... When it comes to the Galactic Federation, what was a point where you were like, okay, maybe these other beings, besides the beings in your room and stuff, what about when you started understanding that maybe you have some sort of work with the Galactic Federation or that you are them or that you're some sort of 
hybrid or star seed they call them when i felt the need to um explain to others about spirituality i mean like i'm a person that if you have an experience then you have to tell everyone like that's just me as a person <clears throat> but i started talking to people about it but i also noticed people are very um interlocked with their religious beliefs and there's nothing wrong with that so i've learned to just leave it and not to argue i mean that's the thing with religion. It's just pick me, pick me. And spirituality, you just become, I don't want to say enlightened, but you just become a person that is open to everything and you explain and whether a person is closed-minded or not, you you just explain everything. And I feel the need to do that. I think that's when I actually realized, hmm, maybe, maybe I might be um, within the uh, Galactic Federation. I might be a mm -hmm. part of that or something. Mm -hmm. I thought that was very fascinating. Do you feel any sort of soul connection to certain types of people or beings or energy? Because I know a lot of star seeds. Like, for example, if you're in a Ryan star seed, I know a bunch of Ryan star seeds who are very attracted to gray beings. They just look at them and say, like, that's family. Yeah. Or, like, they look at that star and they're like, they don't, maybe they don't see it as home yet, but they're like, I don't know what it is about that place. It just feels like home or a safe space you know i can i i'm not so good at the energetic readings but if i see a person i can like i just look at them obviously you can tell the difference between a sketchy looking person and a high vibrational looking person <laughs> yeah <laughs> but uh you can just you can feel it like you can almost feel it You're like hmm that person just like me or like that person is driven just like me i can tell like even when i'm at the gym i'm like yeah i, I I try to like identify people's jobs at the gym because I feel like I know. So I'll be like, hmm, where do you work? And I'll think, I'm like, huh, sometimes I get it wrong, sometimes I get it That's right. That's a perfect way to start with your abilities. Yeah. Because I know you're diving into, because you got really strong claircognizance, which is like just knowing stuff. Yeah. And you're getting your clear audience and clairvoyance hugely. But the last one you've been working on, especially recently, has been clairsentience and energy. So tell us yeah. some of the tactics on how you've been working on that or what it's been looking like so far. I'm a very intuitive person. See, like once you open this uh, third eye in spirituality, your your abilities are different for every person. So I'm more of an intuitive person. I don't really feel energy, um, but I'm I'm also very like uh, I can read people like like a book. Honestly, like I'm in tune with psychology. Like and I I grew up. I habituated to observing everything. I I would have social anxiety, but I started to remove all that, all those flaws and insecurities of like, oh, everyone's looking at me and I'm like, everyone's in their own head. Everyone's thinking about themselves. Like you, you're, it's almost like you're walking a world with like AIs, like mm -hmm. you feel different and it's not like a superiority complex. You just feel different in a, in a humble way. It's almost like, how do you explain it that you know... <sighs> The only way people call it NPCs, <laughs> but I don't want to call that because it sounds mean, but it's true. It's like yep. these people that are, they're just following along with the quote unquote, I need a new word for matrix, yep. but the system, the system that's put in play, mm -hmm. it's like they are following that. And there's some people that we would consider players like you who are in the game and are consciously playing it. They're aware of the bigger picture and they're doing what they can to change the game by playing in the game. Yeah, you know what? I don't blame people for being stuck in, stuck in the the system, the matrix because I remember what it like uh what it was like to be in that situation and that's why I feel the need to help them evolve. I'm like, "Hey, there's some there's something bigger over here. Maybe there's purpose in life besides just working for the system and and being a slave to your mind to the system, just being a slave." Maybe there's there's a bigger picture of life to live live a fulfilling life. That's why I think I cultivated all these ambitions to be successful is to live a serene life where I can just sit back and do things I love and make money. And I know it's hard when you are, I mean, we're all still freeing ourselves from the system, but it's like when you are in a space where you see beyond everything and you're so I'm getting a huge deja vu right now. This is crazy, bro. Yeah, that's weird. Oh my god. This is definitely meant to happen. And it's it's like 
you see beyond and you understand the game, but you're seeing everybody else that's still in the game mm. unconsciously. Like there's still NPCs and you're trying to awaken them. And it's like sometimes I know you've noticed this too. It's like you help them and then they get out of the game and they're awake. Yeah. They're like, they're oh, back whoa. In. And then right after they're like, okay, bye. And then I'm they like, go back into it. What the fuck is wrong with you? Like, <laughs> I just showed you something cool and you're like, uh, okay, I'm going back to the Matrix. I'm like, that's what I'm saying. It's like the next day they forgot everything we talked about and everything they saw. Yeah, I'm like, what? Some people are very different and I find it really, not weird, but like confusing. Like you, a person must understand themselves before they can understand another person. If you can't, if they don't want to be helped, that's a big thing. If they don't want to be helped, it's like... You can't help them. Yeah. But like, I remember, like, I'll do readings for people and I'll do, like, a little session. And then they're like, whoa, okay. Like, it, it, it really, like you said, it depends on their mentality. They have to be really dedicated because you could do a whole session with them and then they see, okay, that you're a real intuitive, that, you, that you're tapped in, but they don't know fully how it works. And it's like, okay, some, they'll ask questions after. Yeah. They're like, oh my God, this is real. So, and then they want to ask you about what happens after death. They want to ask you, okay, what are these beings? What, what's the truth of the universe they're essentially asking you? But others, they're just like, whoa, you have abilities and that's, that's cool. Okay, want well, to play Fortnite later? Oh my and God. I'm like, bro, I just showed you more about the truth of the universe. <laughs> and you want to play some damn Fortnite? <laughs> like, Yeah, yeah. Uh in today's day and age, people will always, as humans, especially with the system, uh, we always feel the need to rationalize things. So I feel like when you do uh, do energetic readings on people, they'll be like, huh, maybe they're just stalking me. I'm like, no, nah, that's not <laughs> how it works, my friend. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's uh, the, the first thoughts. But then they'll say some, like, such as you, like, you'll say some crazy shit and I'm like, You'll, you'll, you'll like question yourself. You're like, what the fuck is like this? And then, <laughs> especially like a person with me that thinks of the bigger things in life i'll start to do research and i'm like hmm maybe this is the truth and it totally helps piece it together when you get and i know it's like you you have been getting so much of this insight and you are getting ready to get even more and it's like okay i want to put this somewhere but first i want to understand the logistics of it and like how it works so like you i this was like this is like what's gonna happen with you which was happening with me um, one good example is with Kundalini. I didn't think that stuff was that serious yeah. until I started awakening. And then I could feel this energy moving up and down my spine and yeah. going to my third eye. And my third eye was pulsing. I was like, what the hell? And then I'm like, I don't know what this is, but there's some sort of energy. So then I always lived. I would always like meditate and move the energy up and down. I could feel what areas had like like they weren't moving or they were blocked and I could feel it moving again if I changed it. And some of the areas I had to do some sort of change in my life and the way I did things for the energy to move again. Like if I didn't mm. talk or express myself enough, my throat energy was stuck. And then I looked it up and I was like, okay, these are what they were talking about with chakras and Kundalini. Yeah. Yeah. Um, honestly, I know I through meditation, I do a lot of meditation, but I think, uh, given that i'm not very like good with energy i don't feel, like i know what you're talking about because sometimes i'll have that odd feeling where i feel, feel that shit and you're like what the fuck is that <laughs> yeah but it's it's very it's very weird uh, how spirituality works in general in the universe like there's so many questions and i don't think they need to be answered but someone like me will always go searching for answers i'm kind of i kind of over intellectualize about a lot of things but i'm working on that just that's we need actually way more of those because some people do not a lot of people you see they don't want to go deep and then they call you an overthinker they call it adhd because your mind can go everywhere all the time and it needs like some sort of stimulation but that's a super damn power because then everybody's going to go to you for answers They're like how do you know all this stuff well one i'm intuitive and two i've done so much research into these things in my mind it's almost like it craves yes. for this knowledge yeah with the person with adhd it does affect me a lot uh as opposed to a neurotypical person but i i think adhd plays a role in uh this like insatiable like need to acquire knowledge on like upon all subjects that matter i don't know why but that's why i over intellectualize a lot i feel a need to like state a fact on everything i <laughs> i don't think that's needed but just because like i know so much knowledge with my adhd power it's it's a gift and a curse mm -hmm. honestly but yeah i try to look at adhd as a gift but it does especially when like i'm not on my adderall it does really fuck me up so how are you honing in with it because i know you're starting to see it more as a superpower 
So what have you done so far to almost train it or hone in on it? Because I know you don't want to take the medication anymore, but you know mm-hmm. it's like necessary at this moment yeah. in your journey. So like what would you recommend for all the people listening that do have this and also are on the journey to start to seeing how it is a superpower? Honestly, supplements, um, I've recently turned into a big supplement junkie to help uh, my ADHD. And there's there's a couple supplements out there that really have helped me um, focus my mind because the scientific and like uh, neuroscience behind Adderall given to people with ADHD it is. It's. It doesn't make sense at all. If you watch a uh, a ne- neuroscientist talk about Adderall and ADHD, it does. It makes no sense how Adderall is prescribed to people with ADHD. It's a, a stimulant, and our brain's already so stimulated, it's unnecessary. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I've been trying to find ways still to uh, help help cope with my ADHD and. Hopefully it doesn't affect me, but I when I am off of it, really. What's been the biggest challenge with it? Um, where do I even start? Overthinking. Um, I overthink a lot when I'm not on my pill. Um, focus, unless it's something I'm actually interested in, like rapid thoughts. I can't even take like have control over my thoughts because they're constantly coming in. Mm-hmm. It's like it's really it's really distracting and. Yeah, it, I don't want to say all the negatives about it because there is lots of positives, but I do think the negatives um, exceed the positives. Whenever I think about it, it reminds me of like, for those listening that are uh, star season or deep into like galactic history, it reminds me of like when we talk about the Lyrans and the Draconians and how the Draconians saw love as weak and took advantage of the Lyrans because of that. And then the Lyrans started seeing love. They're like, maybe love is weak. Mm. But really, it was actually their superpower against the Draco, which were pushing fear. Mm. And so they realized that actually love is not weak, that it's a superpower. And when they used it, that it actually was like there, it was a weapon. Mm. And so when I look at it like that, because when you look at it from one end, you're like, oh, it's weak. But yeah. then you look at it from another angle and you're like, that's a goddamn weapon. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's a high vibrational weapon. Yeah, it's a yeah. Weapon, I mean, the weapon of love. It, it's, it'll just overtake you in such a, um, like I don't know how to put this a, a high vibrational way. It's, <laughs> it's a high vibrational way to kill someone. I guess if you want to use in that. Term. You have to really train it because if you're in like a unconscious version of love or like a very uh love without strength, it is weak because. You're letting people walk over you. You yes. are. It, it's basically pushing you into a disadvantage. But when you have the strength behind it and you have power behind it, then all of a sudden that love becomes like a superpower. Yeah. So I also look at things like ADHD and even people with autism like that because it really is a power. But if you don't train it or you don't hone in on it and learn how to use it, then it becomes a weakness, like how they always want yeah. you to think it is. Kind of like a people pleaser. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, if you don't set boundaries as a people pleaser and you're always giving people your time, it can it can really, I like to use the term social battery. You drain out your social battery if you're constantly giving people uh, your time and, and your, uh, you're, you're going to run out your uh, mental capacity and it is really draining. So I suggest that uh, you just build boundaries and be like, no, I can't come out and drink tonight. I can't do this tonight. I have something to do. I think you should build a relationship with yourself instead of always people pleasing. I think that's when you can utilize the power of love. Mm-hmm. So I want to ask you now, what would you say is a truth of the universe that you would want people to know? Oh, this is these are deep like questions. The truth of the universe that people should know. I think the universe is so profound, especially psychedelics show you that. I think it's it's such a big topic and it's it's what exactly it's like a thing that you go searching for that you'll find. I think there's so many answers and questions throughout the universe. Um but honestly, 
with that question like being asked, it is it is so deep and philosophical and like spiritual. I I don't know how to answer it. <laughs> you know what? I'll give one. Yeah, let's hear. What and this feels say. so general too. Like it, mm-hmm. it's hard. To, you're so right. It's hard to answer that question. I would say is that it's ever expanding. Mm, oh. And so it's like even when you're a master at something, quote unquote, a master of something, you still you still have so much area you could grow in it. You could never really be a master at it. You could know a lot, but you could never know it all. And even when you know a lot of knowledge about it, there's still a lot of wisdom mm-hmm. and things to learn from it. Yeah, you, yeah, I see what you mean. You can never really truly become enlightened. That yeah. term enlightened where you you're you're a wisdom like monk and and you know everything. I don't think that could ever truly happen. It makes me think about actually it was actually a Buddhist that said that. He goes, You could never know everything. And he said, Don't look at me as the one that knows everything. I really know nothing. Yeah. And everybody's like, What are you talking about, bro? Like you sitting on the you sitting there educating us. Mm-hmm. But he's trying to also humble you to put you in perspective because he's like because if if you put yourself in ego you're like i know all this i know it all Mm -hmm. then you also block yourself from raising higher in consciousness it it makes me think about the dimensions how they're like how there's 12 and how we raise up like 3d physical 40 astral 5d soul 6d is like a greater awareness of soul and then it keeps going higher to where we can't even fathom that joint yeah it makes me think about that and how you're always there's always more to go and you could settle you could sit in 5d like yeah we good you know what i'm saying we live in life but then yeah. you look up and you're like whoa there's actually way more dimensions up there and i have no idea what's yeah there. that's a that's a good analogy for the the term enlightenment you can never really reach it especially in this world you can't know everything so i think you just should build a humble um personality or like uh you should just build uh, yourself as a humble person because you can never truly and uh reach enlightenment speaking of buddha buddha's right there and he's uh oh yeah man yeah he's he's pretty chill if you want to reach a um a life of fulfillment and growth and you have to embrace the journey and because once you get to the end of the journey you're like what do i do now right I, I, i finished what do i do now I think you should embrace the ups and downs through the journey because that's that's the beautiful part of life. It's not the the success and the thing that you ought to achieve. I don't think it's that. No matter what you learn, know there's more you can accomplish from mm-hmm. that. So never feel like you got it. No, okay, I've I've got something. It's like you got you completed one challenge. Now it's time for the next level. The next level have different challenges, but it's gonna be very it's gonna be very different like you may level one may be hard as hell but level two may be not as hard as the first level because you've gotten like it's like learning jolly phonics and like abc one two three before you learn mathematics and it's like okay what's what's next like if you don't look at the journey as something that is the reason why you're going through this then it's just going to lead you down a, another path of, yeah. for lack of a better word, ego. Because you're like, oh, yeah. I'm going to be rich. I'm going for this. You get there. All right, what's up? And then you see they're depressed and all that stuff because they haven't, they they yeah. missed the whole purpose of it. Especially so the true. journey of getting there. That's the actual fun part. Because then you sit in your chair. You old as hell. You sit in your chair. And then, yeah, you did it. And then you like talking about what you went through. And you realize it's actually the journey that was the fun part. You get the trophy. The trophy only represents the journey yep, and everything you've been through in the journey. So I like how you said that. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's like li- life is all about fulfillment and overcoming obstacles. And I think you should embrace everything just as long as we're down here because we don't live eternally. I mean, Oh, and another one is never be scared to go into something you're not familiar with. Um, I think you should always take every opportunity in life, even for example, if you get out of high school, it may be scary because you're going in the real world, but never be scared to jump into something new because every new opportunity has something new to offer you. And look at it like a video game. This is your soul's experience here. You're like, even the negative things that happen, 
you're hyped for that. You're glad it happened because at the end of the day, you see what it granted you. Yeah. It's like not looking at things black and white, like good and bad yeah. and all of that. At the end of the day, that negative experiences you went through, you are so grateful for it. it taught you so damn much that makes you the mature being you are now. So even when you're going through something at the moment, you should be hype about it. You're like, ooh, what am I going to learn from this? Yeah. And then at the end, you're like, thank you, universe. Like, I needed that because now with what I'm doing two years later, you're looking back and you're like, damn, that thing I went through was a textbook example for yeah. me. So now I don't have to go through that shit hard like that anymore now. Yeah, it's all it's all about a uh, perspective. Even on the negatives, you find a way to say thank you. I mean, this is a learning experience that I will try not to do again. And I learn you live, you learn. Like, you will, once you overcome or make a mistake, I mean, it's okay to make a mistake. You just evolve. You become better. You you make sure you don't make that mistake again. So always jump into th uh, new things. Who cares what's the result, like, what's going to be the result? You're, there's always something of benefit you are going to extract out of opportunity and um, the dark, going into the dark or something you're not familiar with. Yeah, I like that. Going into the dark. Don't be afraid to dive into the darkness to find your light because the only way you could truly find what light is and find your light is by going into the dark. And that's yes. really, that's like a universal, Yeah. when I think about it, that's extremely universal because that's the reason why Source separated from itself, creating these smaller souls to experience itself. And that means mm -hmm. it had to go lower in dimensions, which is going further away from itself, which you could say is getting lower vibrational getting darker because it's separating from the pureness it is yes so yeah. even yeah. when you look at a demon or a lower vibrational being you're like you're still like me you're just further away from source i see yeah. and you're gonna find your way back to the light as we all did but we had to all go through this soul experiences going into the dark to go back and that's the whole universal reason why we are here yeah damn that's that's very profound. I know what you mean. Those are one of those moments where you just go, hmm, damn. And you have damn. to almost reprogram your mind a bit and it makes you think differently, which makes your energy different, which makes your whole programming different. So it's like really like riding a bike. You get these new things and then all of a sudden it's hard, but then all of a sudden it's programmed in you and it's so easy to see the world like a yeah. video game now. Yeah, it's like it's a... It's literally like a video game. You just upgrade. You upgrade your, if you want to call it your soul, and you become better, more high vibrational. Um, yeah, I, I think it's very abstract and cool how the divine works and why we're here. I mean, I don't know it all, and I never probably will, but I think it's something that you just should embrace. This physical body is just the vessel for you yep. to exist here. When you really see that, and you see the bigger picture of it all, you're like, damn, this really is a damn video game. Yeah. So I don't even want to, like, of course we still want to play our Roblox, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> the Roblox. <laughs> but you're not going to want to play so much video games as much because you're like, I am in it. I want to upgrade this character. I want to go to the gym. I want to feel nice in my body. I want my, my game character to look good. Yeah. I want to read this book so I can have more knowledge because this planet is an open world rpg game like or is, is that yeah. the word rpg uh um i get yeah you know what you could use that word like yeah <laughs> so, something like that something there's, like that, there's yeah. a word for it where it's like an open world game mmo or something <laughs> so it's like you could just go in there and see all these different souls from all over the place in these human bodies and mm -hmm. you're like yeah i don't want to play that fortnite no more i want to i want to do what is necessary for me to upgrade this character so i could live in this open world mmo game it's kind of beautiful to think about it that's how it works like so beautiful upgrading i mean this purpose i i find that really cool yeah you guys heard it from obri himself prince of orion hope you guys enjoyed this episode we go see you soon yeah.